Hello everyone, welcome back to Immortal News. Today, we're paying tribute to 12 notable figures we've sadly lost on August 22nd, and in the days that followed. In our news segment, we'll delve into the devastating events in North Carolina, where a house explosion claimed the life of Tennessee Titans cornerback Caleb Farley's father. We'll also discuss the tragic incident in California, where Laura Ann Carlton, a staunch supporter of LGBTQ plus rights, was fatally shot while defending her store's pride flag. Stay with us for these poignant stories, and if you value our coverage, please like this video and support. Thank you. Number 11. Dan Green, the Marvel maestro behind iconic X-Men artistry. Dan Green, an emblematic figure in the Marvel Universe best known for his long-standing collaboration on the uncanny X-Men, passed away after a prolonged illness on August 22nd at the age of 70. Dan's remarkable journey began in the early 1970s at DC, where he started his comics career by penciling backup stories. His transition to an inker was driven by his own acknowledgement of being a slow penciler. This shift in role marked the inception of a legacy in the Marvel world, beginning with Captain Marvel, where he debuted as one of Jim Starlin's inkers. Green's defining moment came in 1977, where he inked Iron Fist and soon transitioned to iconic titles like Avengers and Doctor Strange. In 1984, he took over the illustrious Uncanny X-Men, working with John Romita Jr., which included iconic additions like Uncanny X-Men No. 207. His versatility was evident when he showcased his painting prowess with the graphic novel Doctor Strange Shambhala. His dedication to Uncanny X-Men was unwavering for six years, cementing his reputation in Marvel's history. The Marvel DC bridge was crossed when Green returned to DC in the early 2000s, contributing to titles like Dead Man and Batman, Legends of the Dark Knight. Even in the recent past, his work continued to grace DC titles. Remembered not just for his artistic flair, but also his deep-rooted commitment, Dan Green leaves behind a legacy that touched iconic Marvel and DC titles alike. Tribute to Dan Green. Number 10, Wayne Gilbert, An Intimate Dance with Life, Death, and Art Wayne Gilbert, beloved artist, passed away at the age of 76 on August 17th. Gilbert, known for his unique and thought-provoking artworks, didn't just create art, he lived amidst it. In his home, a repurposed glass factory in the Heights, artworks were not just decorative pieces, but extensions of his soul. While Gilbert's recent exhibition, Tomorrow's Unknown, is drawing attention for its intricate blend of cremated human remains with resin and pigment, his intent was never sensationalism. Instead, his work echoed deeper reflections on the nexus between art and existence, life and death. He immortalized the deceased in his paintings, inscribing their names behind the canvas, seamlessly weaving the past into the present. Born in Denver, Gilbert's Houston journey began as a child. Despite his talent, he didn't initially pursue art, a reflection of post-World War II sensibilities where practical careers were prioritized over creative ones. His rendezvous with art came later, sparked by personal struggles and a profound awakening during an art class with Chester Snowden in 1977. Graduating with a degree in painting from the University of Houston in 1984, Gilbert and his supportive wife Beverly became pillars in the Houston art community running the Heights-based Digital Imaging Group and the G-Spot Contemporary Art Space. Gilbert's groundbreaking approach to incorporating unclaimed human remains in his artworks was less about the medium and more about the message, a contemplation of the myriad facets of existence, from its most jubilant moments to its harshest realities. His legacy stands as a testament to the power of art to explore life's most profound questions, even as they remain unanswered. Tribute to Wayne Gilbert, Number 9. Carl Krennel, the Mountaineer Beacon of Dedication and Skill Carl Krennel, one of West Virginia football's most legendary figures, passed away on August 19th at the age of 74, 
His death was confirmed by his older brother Romeo Cornell via an email sent by the Houston Texans Media Relations Department. The exact cause remains unspecified. An emblematic middle guard for the Mountaineers, Crennel was not only the defensive MVP of the 1969 Peach Bowl, but also garnered second-team Associated Press All-American honors twice under coach Jim Carlin. His significance in the rebuilding phase of Mountaineer football during the late 1960s can't be overstated. With tales of his recruitment, including a memorable car ride with Bobby Bowden, becoming part of the Mountaineers' folklore. Crennel's accolades extended beyond college. After being selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers in 1970, his pro career soared in the Canadian League, earning multiple All-Star recognitions and three Grey Cup wins. Beyond the gridiron, Carl led a life filled with varied endeavors, from being a painting contractor to embracing family life. His lineage continues with his children and grandchildren. Notably, Carl's son worked under the guidance of his uncle Romeo, an NFL stalwart, with five Super Bowl titles to his credit. Inducted into the WVU Sports Hall of Fame in 1998, Carl's legacy as an unstoppable force on the field and a devoted family man off it remains indelible. Tribute to Carl Krennel. Number 8. Andy Rankin, a goalkeeping legend and Watford's unforgettable hero. Andy Rankin, the iconic goalkeeper celebrated for making one of the most remarkable saves in Watford history, passed away at the age of 79 on August 21st. Rankin was embraced by the Watford community after joining the team in 1971, establishing himself as a fan favorite at Vicarage Road. His prowess, particularly as a penalty-saving specialist, was evident throughout his career. He clinched the inaugural Watford Observer Award for Player of the Season in both 1972-73 and 1974-75, further showcasing his consistent excellence. But the pinnacle of his career, and a memory cherished by many Watford fans, came on October 4, 1978. In a match against First Division Manchester United at Old Trafford, Rankin made an unbelievable save, denying a seemingly perfect header by Gordon McQueen, ensuring a historic two, one victory for Watford. After an impressive 329 appearances for Watford, Rankin transferred to Huddersfield in 1979 and continued to demonstrate his skills in the goalpost before retiring in 1982 with close to 500 senior appearances. Luther Blissett, who scored the two decisive goals on that historic night at Old Trafford, remembered Rankin with fondness, highlighting the unforgettable memory of his incredible save. R.I.P. Andy, a good man and magnificent teammate, couldn't have done it at Man U without you, Blissett remarked. Rankin's influence extended beyond the field, with teammates recalling his sense of humor and enduring spirit. As tributes continue to pour in, the football community mourns the loss of a true legend. Tribute to Andy Rankin. Number 7. Howard Spodek, chronicler of Ahmedabad's rich tapestry and esteemed historian Howard Spodek, a revered American historian deeply intertwined with the history and culture of Ahmedabad, passed away at the age of 81 in Philadelphia after a brief illness on August 20th. With a profound association with Ahmedabad University and teaching stints at the city's HK Arts College in the 1960s, Spodek was more than just a historian. He was an integral part of the city's evolving story. An acclaimed author, his multi-volume publication, The World's History, and his 2011 opus, Ahmedabad Shock City of 20th Century India, have been pivotal in detailing the city's journey. Having fallen in love with Ahmedabad, Spodek meticulously traced its evolution from the textile mill era, navigating through its narrow alleys, capturing the very soul of the city. Esteemed peers and students remember Spodek as an unmatched scholar. A deeply religious Ashkenazim Jew, 
He was embedded in Ahmedabad's religious tapestry and was even made a member of the city's Megan Abraham Synagogue. His journey in Ahmedabad began in 1964, a move initiated by Dr. Olive Reddick of the Fulbright Office. Over the decades, his research touched upon diverse topics from economic development to princely cities, Gandhi, the Mahagujarat movement, and the initiatives of the Self-Employed Women's Association. Spodek also engaged in filmography, co-creating a poignant documentary on the Sabarmati Riverfront project. In his departure, Ahmedabad loses not just a historian, but a storyteller who passionately chronicled its essence. The city's history, intertwined with Spodek's meticulous work, ensures his legacy endures in its heartbeats. Tribute to Howard Spodek. Number 6. Nancy Frangione, the enigmatic villainess of American soap opera. Nancy Frangione, the captivating American soap opera actress, passed away on August 18th at the age of 70. Born in Barnstable, this Barnstable High School graduate embarked on her illustrious acting journey in 1977 with her role as Tara Martin in All My Children. However, it was her portrayal of the intriguing villainess Cécile de Poulignac in Another World from 1981 to 1984 that etched her name in the annals of soap opera history. This role not only brought her fame, but also earned her the accolade of Outstanding Villainess at the first Soap Opera Digest Awards in 1984. Over the years, Frangione reprised this iconic role multiple times, leaving an indelible mark each time. Her versatile talent wasn't confined to daytime drama alone, she made significant appearances in renowned nighttime series such as The Nanny, Highway to Heaven, Matlock, and Buck Rogers in the 25th century. On a personal front, she shared a bond both on and off screen with co-star Christopher Rich, marrying him in 1982. Their union, which lasted till 1996, was blessed with a daughter, Marielle Rich. Frangione's departure leaves a void in the world of entertainment, but her legacy as one of the most unforgettable villainesses will forever remain etched in the memories of her admirers. Tribute to Nancy Frangione. Number 5. Sergei Babkov, a basketball luminary and pillar of Russian sports. Sergei Babkov, the dazzling stalwart of Russian basketball, passed away on August 21st, age 56. Known for his illustrious stint with Unikaja Malaga, Sergei was a force to be reckoned with during the 1990s. His prowess on the court shone bright as he clinched silver medals for Russia in both the 1994 and 1998 World Championships. Memorable among his many feats was his standout performance as the leading scorer against Team USA in the 1994 World Championship Final. Crowned the scoring champion of the 1993-94 German League, at a young age of 21, his impressive scoring average of 16.4 points during his six-year tenure in the Spanish ACB League remains commendable. Though he hung up his boots in 2001, Babkov's transition to coaching retained his significant influence in Russian basketball. Tribute to Sergei Babkov Number 4. Jean Canavaggio, a beacon of Cervantian literature and cultural diplomacy. Jean Canavaggio, an illustrious biographer and esteemed emeritus professor of Spanish literature at Paris West University, Nanterre La Défense, passed away on August 21, 2023, leaving behind an unmatched legacy. Canavaggio's profound expertise in the works of Cervantes culminated in his direction of a fresh translation of the author's complete novels for the revered Bibliothèque de la Pléiade in 2001. His dedication to Spanish literature was further exemplified by his leadership roles, from presiding over the jury of external aggregation of Spanish between 1988 to 1992, 
to his tenure as the director of the Casa de Velázquez in Madrid from 1996 to 2001. John's acclaim wasn't just limited to France. He was a respected figure in Madrid's Real Academia de la Lengua and Real Academia de la Historia and was an honorary fellow of the Hispanic Society of America in New York. His contributions to the Cervantian realm remain unparalleled and authoritative. Tribute to Jean Canavaggio. Number 3. Pierre Cornet de Saint-Cyr, the luminary of Parisian art and auction world. Pierre Cornet de Saint-Cyr, a prominent figure in the Parisian art market, passed away at the age of 84 on August 20th, as the founder of the eponymous family auction house established in 1973 and later joined by his sons Arnaud and Bertrand, Pierre's contributions to the world of art were unparalleled. His firm, later acquired by Bonhams in 2022, was renowned for monumental sales including the collections of Alain Delon and Hélène Rochas. Born on January 1, 1939, in Meknes, Morocco, Pierre's career took a turn when he chanced upon a drawing by Francois Verdier. He soon became synonymous with notable charity auctions, remarkable encounters, and his exceptional talent for identifying artworks like those by Andy Warhol and the Maitre de la Passion de Karlsruhe. A true connoisseur, he often emphasized the importance of learning art and always acquiring masterpieces. Tribute to Pierre Cornet de Saint-Cyr, news news one house explosion claims life of nfl player caleb farley's father in north carolina on monday night a devastating house explosion occurred in the mooresville suburb of charlotte north carolina taking the life of 61 year old robert m farley he was the father of caleb farley the cornerback for the tennessee titans the 6391 square foot property valued at two million dollar and purchased by the Young Titan in 2022, has been declared a total loss by Iredell County Emergency Management. The cause of the explosion, suspected to be a gas leak, is under investigation by multiple agencies, including the Iredell County Fire Marshal's Office, the NC State Bureau of Investigation, and the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Dominion Energy is also investigating the event at their customer's residence. Expressing his support for Caleb Farley, Titans head coach Mike Vrabel emphasized the need to emotionally support the young player during this challenging time. Titans running back Derek Henry also extended his heartfelt prayers to Farley and his family. The tragedy is an added blow to Farley who lost his mother to breast cancer in 2018. Breaking news. News 2. Laura Ann Carlton a 66-year-old store owner of the Magpie Clothing Store in California's San Bernardino Mountains, was tragically shot after defending her store's prominently displayed pride flag from repeated vandalizations. Fearlessly standing for LGBTQ rights, Ms. Carlton constantly replaced the flag each time it was torn down. The alleged attacker, Travis Ikaguchi, 27, confronted Carlton over the flag and after making derogatory remarks shot her. Subsequently, Ikaguchi was killed in an altercation with law enforcement. Carlton's unwavering support for the LGBTQ plus community was evident not only in her defense of the flag, but in her store's ethos, which reflected her personal beliefs in love, acceptance, and equality. This tragic incident occurs amidst a noted rise in anti-LGBTQ incidents across the U.S. Known for her generosity, Carlton had also converted her store into a relief center during a recent blizzard. The community mourns a beacon of hope and love, remembering her as a force of nature who really cared about people. Breaking news. News 3. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, the motorsport community mourns the tragic death of Ashley Albertson, a promising young driver from Tony Stewart Racing. An incident of apparent road rage led to a devastating two-car collision on Jackson County, Indiana. 
the 24-year-old Albertson, was a passenger in a white GMC terrain driven by her fiancé, Jacob Kelly. They were set to exchange wedding vows in March 2024. The dramatic events on the highway escalated as their vehicle and a Chevrolet Malibu, driven by 22-year-old Austin Cooper, jostled for lane positioning at high speeds. A tragic sequence saw Kelly losing control, resulting in a collision that caused Albertson's fatal ejection from the car. While Albertson was declared dead upon arrival at the University of Louisville Hospital, Kelly, Cooper, and an underage passenger survived with non-life-threatening injuries. As the motorsport community grapples with the loss, Albertson's grief-stricken father posted an emotional tribute on her official racing Facebook page, expressing gratitude for the overwhelming support they've received. The tragedy serves as a dire warning, emphasized by teammate Tony Stewart, against the perils of road rage. As investigations continue, the motorsport world comes together, remembering a bright star extinguished too soon. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Creed Taylor, the visionary jazz producer of modern times. Creed Taylor, the maestro behind the transformation of jazz during the latter half of the 20th century, passed away on August 22nd in 2022 at the age of 93. Following a stroke on August 2nd while visiting family, he couldn't regain his health, as relayed by his daughter-in-law, Donna Taylor. Mr. Taylor's storied career as a jazz producer began in the 1950s. By 1960, he'd established the renowned Impulse label, which soon became synonymous with jazz legends such as John Coltrane. His tenure at Verve Records is particularly memorable for championing bossa nova through iconic recordings like Getz Gilberto, which won Grammy Awards and brought the world the girl from Ipanema. His approach to jazz was distinctive. He firmly believed jazz, having roots in popular music, should always resonate with a broad audience. This philosophy might have raised eyebrows among purists, but it brought jazz to more people than ever before. CTI's identity was so strong, music historian Ashley Kahn likened its impact to that of Motown. Taylor's love for jazz was evident early on. After serving in the Marines during the Korean War, Taylor moved to New York, immersing himself in the vibrant jazz scene. This love affair with music saw him working with the best, from Stan Getz to Herbie Mann, throughout his career. Creed Taylor's indomitable spirit left an indelible mark on the music industry. Survived by his wife Harriet Schmidt, three sons from his first marriage, a daughter from his second marriage, and five grandchildren, his legacy remains timeless. Tribute to Creed Taylor. Number 1. Mickey Grant, the Renaissance Woman of American Arts and Theater. Mickey Grant, a powerhouse in the realms of music, theater, and television, passed away on August 22, 2021, in Manhattan, New York City, at the age of 92. Grant's artistic voyage began with double bass lessons in her elementary school, evolving over time to piano and acting. Grant's achievements are many. She stood out not only as an American soprano singer, but also as an actress, writer, and composer. Notably, she performed in acclaimed productions such as Having Our Say and Tambourines to Glory, her collaboration with Langston Hughes on Jericho Jim Crow and her works like The Gingham Dog and Don't Bother Me I Can't Cope were testimonies to her unmatched prowess. This versatility earned her three Tony Award nominations, sealing her legacy in the annals of Broadway. Her trailblazing spirit was evident in her roles in television. She was the first African American to have a dedicated storyline in a daytime soap, playing attorney Peggy Nolan on Another World. Her radio segment, Readings and Writings, underscored her dedication to diversifying her skills and providing meaningful content to her audience. Beyond her illustrious career, Grant's personal life saw her in a 12-year-long marriage with television news film editor Ray McCutcheon. They parted ways in 1978 but remained significant chapters in each other's lives. Grant's monumental contributions to American arts and her tireless pursuit of excellence remain an inspiration for generations to come. Tribute to Mickey Grant
That concludes our coverage for today, but the stories of those we've lost continue to resonate with us all. We invite you to also watch our special feature on the 13 biggest stars who died recently, where we pay homage to the lives, talents, and legacies that have left an indelible mark on our world. You can find the link to that video in the description below, or click on the card appearing on your screen now. If you found today's video informative and touching, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Immortal News for more compelling stories and tributes. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next video. Stay safe, and take care.